Unium is the subscription management hub for B2B SaaS companies. Whether you're looking to expand to new markets, experimenting with pricing models, or simply want a streamlined quote to cash process, Unium got your back. On top of that, Unium Insights provides the SaaS metrics you need for reporting to the board and for future company valuation. It gives you the key figures needed to drive your business forward and take strategic decisions. Unium. We help SaaS companies manage their B2B customer subscriptions. your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany, as well as founder and host of the world's first tech entrepreneurship radio called Startup.Radio. I would like to welcome you to an annual tradition, the FinTech Review Germany, Austria and Switzerland 2022. Um, we are airing this on a regular basis on the 25th of December, meaning on a regular basis since more than seven years. This is a review of the most important events in fintech from the perspective of our guests. Keep in mind that since the first fintech review, the field has changed and broadened a lot, really a lot. <laughs> Where it used to be only payment apps, now there's insurance, crypto, prop tech, banking, SME banking, capital markets, and much, much more. So we thought we would invite guests from a very diverse background to give their perspective on the time of Corona 2022 and an outlook for the next year 2023. We would be more than happy if you would rate and review us either on YouTube, the podcast app of your choice you're listening to right now, or the internet radio station. I would therefore like to welcome our guests, Mary, CEO and co-founder of Insmo. Hello, hello, Joe. Doing good. Excited to be here. Luca, CEO and co-founder of the credit platform Exelon. Hey, Jan. It's a pleasure being here. Henrik, CEO and co-founder of crypto custody bank Finoa. Well, Jan, thank you for having me uh, and great to be on this podcast. So I'm Henrik, uh, co-founder and co-CEO of Berlin-based crypto custodian Finoa. Uh, I'm very happy to talk about what happened in 2022 and looking into 23, of course. And finally, our steady guest for the FinTech Review, Frank Schwab, who is the co-founder of the FinTech Forum, an annual event here in Frankfurt, where early stage FinTechs get matched with investors as well as multiple supervisory board members, including banks. Hello. How are you, Atro? I, I'm Frank Schwab. Um, I work as a professional board member and I'm also a co-founder of the German FinTech Forum since uh, 2013. Glad to have you all here. Shall we get started with the questions right away? What was the most important development in the FinTech world in 2022? I think uh, it was all about uh, customer experience uh, because a lot of companies also post-COVID uh, put a lot of efforts into designing the best customer experiences. And it's a trend that will continue also in the coming uh, years because we have seen that the pioneers uh, in customer experience will win the game. So everything about uh, um, uh, automizing processes and providing instant experiences will win the game. That's a very interesting question, given that 2022 almost feels like a pretty big roller coaster. In my opinion, the main shift that we realized uh, was definitely a big shift towards sustainability and not only sustainability as in show your alignment with some sustainable development goals, um, but we definitely feel like uh, this is also something that more and more companies, uh, especially when they're fundraising or even companies when they're borrowing money, will have to start integrating uh, into their business concepts, into their financial planning. So we also see a lot of regulatory pressure in that space 
with the emergence of you know NFRD, uh, the, the implementation of other sustainable financial disclosure regulation. So this was definitely something that was felt very much, apart from obviously you know some market turbulences, rising interest rates, and some of the other ramifications this has had on on the lending markets where we're active. In my personal opinion, let me try to, I'm not going to go so much into fintech in general. I mean, there, I'm very sure you have a lot of great speakers there. Um, so let me focus on, on crypto. I mean, obviously, um, um, we've all seen the news, the, the crypto bear market hit us uh, quite, quite uh, hard this year um, with um, yeah the infamous FTX collapse just a few weeks back um, that obviously set uh, the industry in, into quite some uh, chaos, uh, even in, in, in some ta- at some time, um, and uh, yeah, now we kind of see the aftermath uh, um, of of the uh, downfall of the exchange. Um, see kind of the business models and the market uh, um, value chain also kind of reshuffle a little bit, and I think that was clearly the uh, yeah, most important uh, development that, uh, from our perspective, working in crypto uh, was observable. So from my point of view, we have seen a shift from pure growth, customer growth revenue, uh, towards uh, more attention towards profitability. And um, that goes bo- basically hand in hand with uh, cost cutting. So a significant release of staff of various uh, fintech companies, startups, but as well as traditional uh, banks. And probably the most important uh, development in 2022 was uh, the rebalance of valuations. What we have seen is that uh, fintech companies and startups who seeking or the, who seeking money, um, they, they still get money uh, less than before, but um to sometimes lower and in in a few cases and prominent cases uh significant lower valuations and i think that's basically one of the um most important do you think fintech has peaked in terms of investments as some data suggests yeah it looks like that um 2021 was probably one of the um, peak years when it comes to fintech investment. Uh, But even in 2021, there were less companies, but they did get more because we was it it was beyond series B, C, D, sometimes even E. And actually, that trend continued in 2022. Um, so even here, less companies uh, uh, got more, but uh, as from a total point of view, um, less companies also got less and for sure at lower valuations. Um, I think the, the Klana example was one of the outstanding ones where let's say 80 to 90 percent of decrease in valuation compared to the um, financing round before. And um, that created pressure uh, for the whole uh, ecosystem. But also after, let's say, eight years of growth, so so I'm looking at this ecosystem since 2013, And we had uh, grown year by year. So it's clear at some point in time, grow will stop and uh, markets will consolidate. So we, I I think from a technology point of view, it's still an early market, but let's say the growth was significant over the last eight to 10 years and that now stops and uh, of course, the overall situation of the markets doesn't help. Um, yes and no. I think for the time being, that's clearly a yes uh, if you look at the data. But that would then somehow also mean that we've seen kind of the end development of finance fintech in general, right? So I think we are just weathering a, a global 
recession where you just see um, a slowdown in investment in any aspect, in any asset class. And I mean, um, let's say late stage uh, um, fintech even even more so as a, as a maybe subset of, of tech in general. Uh, but what I just don't believe is that we are kind of at the end of the innovation cycle, right, of of kind of reshuffling uh, traditional finance. There's still so many stones to be turned. Um, if you if you just look at how um, the financial system is still built and on what foundation it is still built. And I think we've just seen um, yeah, the first real um, maybe five, seven year hype cycle of fintech. And now we go through a uh, down cycle. Question is going to be how long it will be. Um, but I'm clearly seeing uh, innovation and with that also uh, funding for the right companies and the right business models coming back in the near future. I would say that investments, especially in fintech and venture capital, it's it ebbs and flows. So uh, I would definitely agree that at the moment, or especially the second half of 2022, was pretty much more in a risk-off environment. But um, we feel like we still have very good conversations with uh, investors and ultimately i think it's you know fairly healthy market shakeout in that sense um we still see that a lot of very good deals are funded especially if you're in a hot space um like ai or esg we see definitely very good valuations being achieved and so i think yes probably uh, there was some sort of peak uh, that uh, we are beyond uh, as uh, far as fintech venture capital fundraising goes um, but I think, you know, uh, good deals and companies with solid fundamentals and good growth projections, as well as a clear path towards profitability, they will definitely still uh, get funding. Um, no, because um, um, one might say that, you know, um, has the hype of fintech and insurtech passed, but we will definitely see a second wave coming. If not uh, in 2023, then 2024, for sure, we will see. Uh, a lot of uh, new and exciting uh, developments happening and we will see uh, also a second wave of investments coming. What is the next hot topic in fintech? Is crypto making a comeback or are we all looking at API tools for embedding finance functions? Oof, yeah, the crypto comeback. So I think it's definitely one of the trends that are here to stay, um, maybe not necessarily the hype around uh, some independent cryptocurrencies, but I believe that um, a lot of investors and also incumbents uh, in the markets like banks, asset managers and so on, they're starting more and more venturing into uh, the uh, into the areas of digital assets. So I'm not 100% sure about a fully crypto comeback. But when we're talking about digital assets, the concept of tokenization and using that in the wider financial markets, then yes, I definitely think that this is something that is going to be driven forward um, with you know, the same amount of resources, even more resources, and the same amount of interests from all market participants, because it's fundamentally a very interesting, uh, interesting concept. It has clear benefits um, for investors. Um, especially when you're looking at alternative assets, you know, you can make, um, you can in introduce liquidity in corners of markets where it has so far been lacking. Um, you can kind of democratize, you know, investing in alternative assets uh, like real estate or uh, maybe even art and music. So we clearly see that. So in that respect, uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, the crypto crypto wave or digital asset wave is definitely here to stay. Um, and if you want to say uh, it's a comeback, then yeah, it's going to make a comeback. Yeah, I mean, uh, embedded finance is a very big one. I mean, we're focused on the uh, fintech lending space. Um, and I think one of the key drivers in the embedded finance ecosystem is ultimately, you know, bringing financial products uh, like loans uh, to a wider audience and uh, basically, you know, creating an easier connectivity and an easier access to financial products for underserved market segments, for underserved borrowers. And so I think that is in connection with the focus on ESG and basically the impact that you can show and the impact that you can create um, by delivering financial products, you know, to a specific audience or to underserved borrowers. Um, I think that has been a, a very big driver and is and continues to be a very big driver. Um, 
I don't think that it's an either or question, right? I think both uh, have their absolute uh, necessity in further innovating the, the financial markets, um, both on very important pillars. I mean, obviously, I'm uh, a bit biased working in the crypto space, so I, I definitely have to say uh, that I think we will see a comeback. And um, what makes me very, let's say, hopeful and positive about this is, one, I mean, we started Finoa in 2018, right? That was in the middle of the last bear market, which then basically took to 2020 to really um, um, come back. And uh, for me, it's bit, a bit of been there, did this. Uh, it's more about, let's say, staying calm, staying patient, um, um, continue on the, the strategy, um, maybe adjusting the strategy where uh, it in the new market reality needs to be adjusted, but don't lose the overall long-term uh, vision that you have in place for your business model. And um, that's what we are doing at Finoa. And that's why I'm also very positive that we will see a great crypto comeback. Um, the question is when it will be. The overall situation with uh, crypto, uh, for for example, because of FTX bankruptcy, is a little bit sore right now. Uh, so it will take time for the market to recover. But again, we will definitely see a comeback. Also on the crypto side, we will see new initiatives on the crypto side. And um, um, until then, uh, we can definitely enjoy some uh, new success stories, everything related about embedded finance and embedded insurance because these are the services that the customers are still expecting to use, but they are expecting to use them in a seamless way. Uh, nobody will go shopping for insurance or, or different financial services, so they have to be there and present with different other products and services. So let's start with embedded. Uh, I, I always said... Um, Banking needs to be implemented uh, where the underlying real business happens. So banking is in many cases a tools for means, whether it's payments, whether it's um, supporting um, businesses with liquidity or uh, credit. So um, it's it's an embedded function. Um, business-wise, and it looks like that now we have the technology and advanced technologies that we can do it um, technology-wise as well. Um, so therefore, yes, in, in retail, at the point of sales, um, embedded will be key because, let's say, you need the money or you need to pay uh, where you basically fulfill your your demands uh, and your wants, especially now in Christmas time, right? You don't want to go first to a bank to get your money and then going into the shops. Ideally, you can, let's say, whether it's online or offline, uh, you can handle your banking at the point of sale. And I think this is not only for, for payments, for payments and now it's obvious, but also for uh, credit and uh, liquidity and w working capital loans. And let's say we will see more and more solutions where, let's say, the financial aspect of the business is embedded as technology progresses. And yes, uh, not only the next year, but the next years uh, uh, will enable that. When it comes to crypto, um, if you look at uh, the crypto cycles over the last 10 years, um, you always ha ha you had a kind of a cooling down period of two, three years. Um, that would basically mean we're in a crypto window now for the first year or the first one and a half years. Uh, that may take us another year um, uh, to enter spring. Um, so therefore, I, I personally believe it. We need to look at, let's say, the the applications, um, how improved and how convenient the applications are, and and what are the underlying uh, value and certain crypto business model uh, provides. And there, 
a couple of let's say scenarios and models out there who that they that make a lot of sense and therefore um it a little bit depends let's say also on the adaptation uh, of the target groups I, i don't expect oh, for next year that it's going uh mainstream as we have seen two years ago uh, where at least we we change from these kind of nerds and very early uh innovators to let's say early adapters um these early adapters now out of the market again given also the the significantly reduced prices Uh, so that basically means uh, only the ones they who uh, understand it for real and therefore let's say the applications to use um, crypto are still in development and they, they still need to improve the convenience um, as well as the business model by itself significantly so um, i don't expect significant jumps in 2023 and even for the next two years i personally believe uh, we need to look at some niche markets where the adaptation makes a lot of sense a niche market may be the metaverse the niche market may be some uh, gaming applications with let's say embedded crypto functionality so embedded is the key here as well the key word uh, as well And at some point in time, we will see, um, especially that when it comes to back office services in the financial industry, that the adaptation and diffusion of blockchain technologies and with blockchain technologies, we will see then um, again the rise of cryptocurrencies uh, because they are again an embedded um, element in a, a blockchain um, ecosystem. So, so that that may take longer, but uh, once that available, the whole world, uh, when it comes to settlement clearance, um, uh, will make use um, of this much more efficient technology compared to uh, the current, let's say, legacy systems. If you have one, what was the most interesting fintech development for you during time of Corona? Um, I guess also from a personal uh, experience, I think the entire uh, neo broker um, kind of trend um, that set in where just, let's say everyone, uh, and I saw it among my friends as well, started buying stocks and uh, started stock picking literally uh, on their mobile phone. Um, with a bit of their spare uh, monthly monthly uh, money in the bank, right? And maybe even a bit out of boredom sitting at home. Um, so I think that was a very, uh, very interesting development. Uh, unfortunately, what I've also seen is that a lot of uh, friends um, have lost some money uh, in, that, uh, in that investment uh, period, um, obviously because we saw the market peaking uh, end of last year and since then, especially in tech, Because that's obviously for a lot of my circle the interesting stocks that that were picked. Um, we have uh, the tech stocks been uh, seen uh, tumbling quite a bit. Um, so that was a very interesting market trend. I mean, obviously, uh, crypto as an investment class uh, also came much more into the spotlight uh, during Corona. Um, and again, a very similar experience, I think, especially on the retail side. Uh, a lot of people in, uh, in Germany would say burnt their fingers uh, by investing and uh, on top of market, and uh, and then being out of uh, out of the money very quickly with their investment. And um, I think those were the two main factors that I found very interesting during Corona. Yeah, it was not an event. It was for me. It was let's say the speed of the adaptation rates of digital in general. So there are countries which lagged behind uh, in the digital adaptation of financial services. And that changed uh, in some uh, countries like Eastern Europe um, dramatically. But even here in Germany, where we had, let's say, a stable 
online usage, we have seen a significant growth when it comes to um, online brokerage, for example, and other financial online services. So even there, the corona helped to give it a push. Um, so at least this was, let's say, uh, some kind of progress um, when it comes to uh, more efficient markets and more efficient behavior. Um, for us, it uh, definitely gave a new opportunity to work on automation, uh, customer experience, and also the embedded uh, insurance part, because we are 100% embedded insurance company. And uh, it gave us uh, and the whole market 